not have Facebook and Instagram, and you know, I didn't have to worry about taking a lot of selfies to post to show people how awesome or depressing my life was. All right. Um, so, anyways, I made it through high school uh, well, you know, good enough to get through. But even after my SPM exam, I did not know what I wanted to do with my life. Right. So my dad said, you know, apply for anything. Just make sure you don't go study too far from home. So I was flipping through the brochure for MMU Cyberjaya, and that was when I saw this 3D rendered image. Um, and when I looked at it, so probably work of a senior or something, right? But when I looked at that 3D image, uh, it reminded me of the game that I was playing then, um, Final Fantasy VII, which was, you know, a big deal. And I thought, hey, am I if I go there, if I go to MMU, does it mean like I'm gonna learn to do something like this? And just like that, you know, I filled up the application and ended up here, uh, joining FCM MMU. So the things that I was learning here was something else. It's nothing like the previous 11 years of education that I had. Um, we were learning about art fundamentals and design principles. You know. Um, things like composition, positive and negative spaces, and all this was so fascinating to me because for the first time, um, I realized what made you know, those comics and games so good. Like everything, the thing that I was feeling, um, everything was by design, and I was amazed. So I love coming to class, right? And naturally, uh, you tend to get good at what you enjoy doing. So fast forward, four years after that, it was the year was 2005, I was on this very stage. It was inside this exact same room. All the seats were filled. In fact, people were even sitting on the stairs. You know, there was a junior from the previous year, the seniors, people from the industry, and we were about to present um, our final year project. For animation student, you have to make a short animation. And my short, uh, you know, we did a group work. It was called Missy Mustaha. It was a short animation about three old folks in the old folks home who wanted who was on a mission to go watch TV after the bedtime curfew. So you know, after a short introduction, we started playing the video. And then seconds into it, people started laughing, right? And then one comedic punchline after another, the room went wild. Like people were just laughing so much. Um, and you know, like I, the, the feeling that I had, it was so amazing. Like for the first time, you know, people, I felt like my work was connecting with people. And then, the, you know, people watched until the end, the credits started rolling, everyone was cheering and applauding. And then it was in that moment that I knew that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So that brings us to act two, perseverance, or the blurred line between crazy and brilliant, right? So Missy Musahab won us a couple of awards, right? Um, and you know, we, we went viral even before YouTube. <laughs> like people from my high school came to me and said, hey, you did Missy Musta. I was like, how did you know? People were, you know, said people were circulating the video around. That was amazing. So mm, you know, uh, I started working at a studio that was creating animation for China. I was animating stuff in Mandarin. I didn't know what all the characters were saying. But uh, it was about four months into work, like less than a year, was when a friend from MMU came to uh, us and in and said that you know she know of this one uh, sorry her her father's friend is this one uncle who is retiring uh, he's a, a retiring businessman from oil and gas and he have a deep pocket and he's looking to set up a production studio because his wife loves watching Hindi movies so much that she wants to make her own movies right <laughs> so we thought you know this is our opportunity, so we resign from our day job, uh, stay at home, work on a business proposal for about a month, and then we went to see him and did the presentation and everything. And we said, look, um, why not you know we skip the live action and do animation instead, right? So he was like, okay, let's do it, right? And just like that, Let's Go Park Production was born. You see, the formation of the company was the easy part, right? But what came after was definitely something else. <coughs> what we set out to do then was to make the first 3D animation movie from Malaysia. And, you know, because we had no experience whatsoever in animation production, we had no clue how impossible it was what we were about to undertake. Um, let me just pin a picture for you guys, right? This is the kind of resource that typically goes into an uh, animation movie from Hollywood. For example, The Incredibles was made with a budget of 90 million USD. 
convert that to Malaysian ringgit, that's about 350 million, the, the exchange rate at that time, right? 350 million, can you imagine how much money that is? I can. <laughs> you can, this is what you can do. If you, get, if you have a job, you can start saving up your whole lifetime, right? And then you can die and then get resurrected and then <laughs> resume your savings for the next lifetime and repeat probably another couple of lifetime and you still might not get that kind of money, right? And we know that no one would hand over 350 million to a new company that was set up by fresh grads, right? So we knew we had to work smart. So we were, you know, we were staying away, we were looking at it and it's like, okay, how do we do this without, you know, so much uh, expensive things? So the things, if you know animation, the expensive thing to do is the things that require a lot of computer calculation, things like cloth, so we skip that, um, things like water, um, hair simulation, and even our main characters back then, the, the two ball kids, we made them twins because, you know, copy and paste, just change the color. And it's like, what about their hair? You don't need hair, just let them be <laughs> bald, like give one of them one hair, right? Um, but yeah, even then, uh, after cutting all the corners that we can, we were about one year into the production and we still, you know, we're not making enough progress to be quick enough. Uh, because, you know, the longer you make the movie, the higher the cost. The higher the cost, the higher the risk of you not making your money back, right? So that was when, you know, we went into overdrive. There's nothing else left to do except grinding, hard work, right? So from then on, it was 9 a.m. Whenever we start work, we would work all the way until like midnight, all the way in until like 5, 6 a.m. the next morning. And I would sleep anywhere on the floor of the studio and then wake up and be at our desk to start working again at 9 a.m. the next day. And this went on for about a year and a half, right? The only time we would leave the studio is when we need to do our laundry. Right? And then we would see how beautiful the outside world is. Like just thinking about it now makes my brain go numb. And that was the most gruesome uh, period of work that I think I had to endure. <coughs> Anyways, um, so after two and a half years in, we managed to complete the, the movie. And um, it went on to be the highest grossing movie of in 2009. Right, and it came so close to breaking the all-time record for the local movie. At that point, the highest was 6.33 million. We came, uh, we collected 6.31. So, yeah, our movie became a massive success, and from that, that you know, uh, from that uh, great content, uh, the license and merchandising business was, en was enabled. So we had uh, toys, we had T-shirts, and we were the first. Um, animation in Malaysia to have uh, branched out the business that way. It was glorious. <coughs> and then, <coughs> let's move on to Act 3, which I call Purpose, or the courage to pursue our dreams. You see, success is the number one enemy to innovation. You know why? Because once you've achieved the things you set out to do, people tend to get comfortable. And there's nothing that feeds your ego faster than success. Like a team that could have worked so well together in achieving what they wanted, once they've achieved it, everyone starts believing they, they are the reason behind that success, right? So um, after about four years since our big break, um, despite the fact that I was having good salary, I could afford you know, to get my own apartment, things like that, I was really unhappy with the direction that, we, that the company was heading in terms of business, in terms of creative, and the culture that we had inside the studio. So I decided to leave, to start over. Right? And two things happened then that I would be forever grateful for. One was that my wife lent me the unconditional support that I needed to make such an insane decision. Um, her, fam her parents even loaned me some money uh, to start my studio. And two was the people, the team who was working closely with me, they chose to follow me even when they didn't have to. Because you know, we were young when we started, but by this time, we were all married and we had kids. It was a risk that was not necessary for everyone. <coughs> it was like given a second chance at life. And you know, by starting over, by starting anew, we get to redefine our purpose. <coughs> and the purpose of WOW, what we've set out to do, everything is in the name. 
Wow is the reaction that you get when you're hit, when you're struck by something that is awesome, right? Um, so that's our promise of quality to the audience. Wow is also a very iconic Malaysian kite. It represents our identity the, of our content. It also, as a kite, means you know it's a toy. It represents play and fun that we need to have in our uh, work. And so, you know, as a kite, it flies high in the sky, it represents our ambition to go far, but also remain grounded by the string, right? And wow, it also happens to be an Arabic letter, which represents the spiritual side of, a of our studio, because we believe it's not enough to just create content that could be entertaining and make you successful, but you need to give deeper meaning to it, so that, you know, you can achieve success, not just in this life, but also the hereafter. So just like that, you know, we set out to create the next big thing. Um, so I was working with my team. You know, the biggest challenge we that we have at this to point in time uh, no a production, a co-production deal with Media Prima. And we also managed to get some uh, funding assistance from MDAC. But you know, when whenever you have any slight delay, any hiccups in the production, cash flow gets stuck. And when cash flow gets stuck, it's very difficult, right? We went to a period where, you know, we, we were suffering through quite a few crises inside the production, and there was about two months that I couldn't afford to pay my staff salary. So I had to, you know, me and my partners, we actually cooked and to feed the, the team. And I was telling the team, I was like, dude, you guys don't have to endure this. If it's too hard for you, you can just leave. But most of them, almost everyone stayed. Like, actually, two of them left, but it's because I asked them to, <laughs> right? Um, but most of them stayed because they believe in what we were doing, right? Um, and also, mm, while we were prepared to put in the hard work, this time around, it's much harder because, you know, as you're married, when you were single, it's easy. It's just about you, right? But once you're married, when you ha once you have kids, it's, it's, it's breaking a lot of hearts to stay <laughs> over in the office. So if any of you guys are in animation, right, think very carefully about <laughs> what you're pursuing. Okay, <coughs> so yeah, just like that, you know, everything started over, the long hours in the studio. Um, but after all the blood, sweat and tears, finally, we released Agent Ali. It was a story about a boy who, you know, a schoolboy who accidentally becomes a spy after he, he put on a, a spy device. Um, it came out and became instant hit on TV. Um, with uh, average viewership of 2 million weekly, Agent Ali became the number one kids content across all TV in Malaysia. Um, <laughs> thank you. And it was captivating, not just to our children audience, but also to many adults as well. Um, you know, it was dubbed by the audience and critics as the new benchmark of Malaysian animation. And we have gone to secure massive collaborations and our latest one was actually with Air Asia where Agent Ali is plastered uh, on, a, on an entire plane. So it's like beyond anything I've ever imagined. <laughs> so we've completed two seasons of Agent Ali. I've been at on TV. Reception was amazing. And now uh, we are in process of making Agent Ali the movie. <coughs> so that's it. Um, there you have it. <laughs> uh, purpose, sorry, passion, perseverance, and purpose. These are the wow factors that you know have driven me to get to where I am right now. And I believe it doesn't matter, you know, whether you're in animation or engineering or anything that you pursue. If you hold on to this tree, I believe you can achieve anything that you set your mind to. Thank you very much.